and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Kaylee, and on this channel I cover all things true crime, travel, lifestyle, and just generalized vlogs. But you have stumbled across the true crime section of our channel. So I just want to give a warning, true crime is not for everybody and you may not like some of the details that come forward in this video or for this case. So if you think that true crime is not something that you will enjoy, please click to another video. Today's case is a fairly brutal case. So I do want to give a trigger warning that does involve the death of children. So again, if you don't think that you're going to be comfortable to watch this video, please go to another one. I'm going to jump straight into today's case because it is a bit of a long one. John was born on the 12th of July 1950. He was one of two children and the family grew up in Broken Hill. Now, throughout John's younger years, he was a bit of a ratbag towards the entire family. And eventually, at the age of 17, he stole his mum's car and left a note in the wardrobe saying that he was no longer going to be living there. He was basically going to run away. He also couldn't hold down a steady job and was always on again, off again throughout his entire work history. He eventually went into the Australian Defence Force, but he was uh, discharged in 1989. Now, with the John's uh, partners, a lot of these women do not want their identities revealed throughout social media and things like that, and I'm going to respect that. So I'm going to go through some of these people and just refer to them as Mrs. A, Mrs. B, Mrs. C. So I hope that doesn't confuse too many people. In 1968, John met Mrs. A, and the pair had two children, a son and a daughter. They eventually got married in 1972. Throughout this relationship, it was noted that it was very toxic, and John became a very controlling individual. Uh, the family went away overseas to America for a family holiday, and during this holiday, John declared that he was not returning to Australia. Now, Mrs. A, she said, well, that's fine, but I'm going with the children, but John would not let one of the children go home. Now, Mrs. A took her daughter, and they eventually flew home, and then about three months later, John rang Mrs. A and said he no longer wanted to watch their son, and that she had to fly back to America to collect him. He basically had just had enough of being a dad while staying in America. Eventually, John also returned back to Australia, and in 1977, the pair got divorced. Now, after their separation, John would still try to control Mrs. A's entire life, and throughout their divorce and their separation, he made sure that she was left with nothing. She was not even able to take her clothes or anything for the children from their family home or anything like that. John was granted access to the children, though, every second weekend. But again, on one of these weekends, John refused to let the children go home. He took the children and basically disappeared. The police uh, did count this as a kidnapping attempt, and it did go on John's record. After his divorce in 1977, John then gets into a relationship with Mrs. B. And in 1979, their daughter is born. Now, in 1983, Mrs. B becomes pregnant with their second child, but at four months uh, of pregnancy, John and her get into an altercation and have a physical altercation, which leads to the miscarriage of Mrs. B's second child. Despite all of this, in 1984, they get married. And then in 1985, their little baby boy is born. But then in 1987, they separate because throughout their entire relationship, John is abusive and controlling. It is also noted that during this relationship, John threatens to kill both children and Mrs. B and set the entire house on fire with them all in it. This is all on John's record. Now, on the day that Mrs. B decided to leave, they had actually had another altercation where John had thrown a rolling pin uh, at Mrs. B's head. This was ultimately the thing that really said she had to leave. And she was so scared of John at this point, she hid the children in the backyard and eventually put them over the neighbor's fence, where she then also jumped the fence while they were hiding from John and went and contacted the police. Later on in 1989, John gets into a relationship with Mrs. C. Now, this relationship, there was a bit of an age gap. At this point in time, John is about 40 years of age and Mrs. C is 21 years old. Now, this relationship does not last very long, but Mrs. C does become pregnant and another child to John is born. But this relationship ended very quickly. Uh, it even ended before the child was born. In around June or July of 1990, John meets Mrs. D. Now, they meet through a personal ad in the Sydney Herald Sun, 
and the pair they hit it off but again John is very abusive and very controlling. Now in this relationship another child is born and Mrs. D becomes very unwell. She ends up becoming uh, anorexic and at her lowest uh, weight is 39 kilos. Now John took full advantage of this and basically controlled every aspect of her life until she got to the point where she decided she had to leave John because of his abusive ways. After she was able to get her own apartment, her and her son moved into the new apartment, but John knew where she lived and would frequently go around there and kick in the door and go in and just terrorise this poor woman. He even uh, would take the young son and just disappear for days at a time. This poor woman, she was just terrorised for years. In 1999, John started up a bit of a whirlwind relationship with Mrs. E., and the pair, even though they only started dating in 1999, at the start of the year, they were married by August in 1999. They were divorced by the year 2000. They had also had a son, but when John discovered that the baby was going to be born a boy, he asked Mrs. E to terminate the pregnancy, and when she refused, John would not speak to her for about a month. Again, this was a very toxic, just horrible relationship and by this point in time I think we're up to eight children that John has fathered. So we're in the year 2000 and John is now 50 years of age. He hops onto a international dating website where he meets Olga, a 19 year old girl. In August of 2001 Olga arrives in Australia and by the end of November Olga and John are married. On the 12th of September 2002, John and Olga's son Jack is born. And on the 14th of August 2004, their daughter Jennifer is born. Olga was a very bright, bubbly young woman and she even started a law degree which she completed in 2008. Olga, she was just so happy and loving of life until she met John and her entire life became completely controlled by John. This, Her entire relationship was again controlled and down to all aspects her finances what she was allowed to wear where she was allowed to go everything outside of the home was decided for Olga she was just basically controlled by John now Jack their son he was very headstrong and he loved his sports he loved video games he was very protective of his mum and of his sister Jennifer, though, she was very quiet and she just loved to read. She was very academic and she did enjoy school. She also loved animals. She had a pet dog and a pet rabbit. And when she finished school, she wanted to become a vet. Now, John wasn't only abusive towards Olga. He was also very abusive towards Jack um, to the point where he would bash Jack. He There was times where he had pinned Jack on the floor and was kicking him in the ribs and in the head. He was also very violent uh, physically and mentally towards Jennifer, but Jack really did cop the brunt of John's abuse. Um, they were even away on a holiday one year. He slapped Jack in the face and held him by his neck up against the wall. Other people passing by intervened to try and get John off Jack. That's how extremely violent he was, even in public. In January of 2016, it got to the point where Jack, he was so scared of being at home that he ran away. Now, John reported him as a missing person and the police ended up finding him on the Bondi beach. Poor Jack, he just didn't want to go home, but the police ended up taking him back home. Now, this finally led Olga to leave John and in August of 2016, Olga took the two children and they basically went into hiding away from John. In 2017, at this point, John has just the most horrible criminal history. All of these abuse uh, things that have gone on to his record are all still there. But he decides that he's going to go and join a rifle club and a pistol club. He applies for a license for uh, rifles and for handguns. Now, he does lie on all of his paperwork, but it's just not checked properly. And he is issued a license and he's also able to purchase three rifles and two handguns, which he does that very year. Now, also in 2017, Jack, Jennifer and Olga, they're living in the West Pennant Hills area. Now, the children, they don't share their address with their friends at school. They do not have any sort of social media. Olga is very careful on who 
she has at her house like there there's no one basically coming around or knowing where they live unless they have known Olga for quite some time Olga was very protective of her children and the family were basically hiding throughout you know the, this part of their life on the 5th of July 2018 Olga takes Jennifer to the train station where she would go and catch the train to get to her school and she went and dropped Jack off at school Unfortunately, this was the last time that Olga would ever see her children alive. At 10.15am on the morning of the 5th of July 2018, John goes to his friend's house, Peter Foreman's, and while he's there, he gives Peter a big white expressed envelope. Now, he tells Peter that if anything was to happen to him, that he is to send out this envelope to the address. It's all labelled and everything. It's ready to go. Peter finds this really odd, but he just sort of goes with the flow and he says no worries at all. John then returns home at 10.30 a.m. and he goes next door and asks for his spare key back, which the neighbour had hanged on to. So the neighbour used to walk the dog and things like that. Now, the neighbour, he again was like, that's, a, that's really odd, but no worries, here's your key back. John then goes to the home of Mrs. B. Now, he had held on to a wooden chest that belonged to Mrs. B., basically for the last 30 years and it was on this morning that he decided that he was going to drop it off. Now she wasn't home, she refused to have any contact with him at all but he did know where she lived and so he left it at her front doorstep. At 3.15pm John goes and hires a rental car. It's later discovered that inside this rental car he also had a Jimmy bar. Then at 4.45pm, Jennifer arrives onto the train station platform after disembarking from her train. She walks home, it's about an eight minute walk, and throughout all of this, John is following her home. As Jennifer reaches her uh, front doorstep or her front um, driveway, she notices John is there and she dashes inside. Unfortunately, she doesn't. She just wasn't able to lock the door and keep John out of the house. And it's at this point that John enters the house and chases Jennifer into Jack's bedroom. Now, Jack, he was playing Fortnite and his video games, but Jennifer managed to climb under his desk and Jack followed her. John then entered the room and just shot both children numerous times. <sighs> Poor... Jack, he was trying to cover Jennifer under the desk and yeah, unfortunately they both were killed at the scene. After John has shot both the children multiple times, he casually walks out of the house. It's at this point that the neighbours see him and sort of say, what's happened? Is everything okay? He doesn't respond to the neighbours and he gets in his car and he drives away. Now, the neighbour, Bruce, he come to the front door and he did notice that the dog did not come running out. He, and he just knew something horrible had happened. He himself has said he just, he could not go inside the house. He knew something had happened. And, oh, I mean, who are, I don't know what I would do in that situation. But he was unable to make himself go in to see what had actually happened. But, of course, the police are contacted straight away and they arrive by 5.20pm. At 5.40pm, Olga, she comes home from work and she discovers that the police are at her home. She wants to know what has happened, where her children are. She starts to panic. The police do inform Olga that, unfortunately, the children have both been killed. And Olga immediately says that it must have been John. John then returned to his home at around 6pm. It is here that John shoots himself in the head. The police don't actually discover John's body until 6.30am the following morning. And to this day, it's still not known how John actually found out that Jennifer would be at the train station at that point in time. But the police did find in one of John's pockets a timetable with the exact time that Jennifer would be returning home on the train. And then, sadly, six months after this horrible ordeal has happened to poor Olga, she then decides that she just can't do it anymore and she takes her own life. This case has just been absolutely horrendous. It's one of the worst ones I feel that I have actually looked into and investigated and sort of gone through the details of. It's just horrendous. I didn't go through a lot of the um, 
the abuse that people went through just explaining that you know they were abused or whatever but this man he was just an animal like oh my how he got a gun license and was able to purchase firearms with his record i just don't understand it i mean obviously glitches in systems and all that but man this guy was a nutbag like he just he was not why just why and it wasn't just like just olga and the children it was years of tormenting women and the children like it, years years and years and years and he just why wasn't he in jail like why wasn't after your fifth or sixth or tenth or whatever he was up to domestic violence orders and you know phone calls to the why was he not in jail i don't know that's just yeah it's crazy if you have made it all the way to the end of this video, thank you very much. If you're not already a subscriber, please consider hitting that subscribe button. It really does help our channel grow. I would really love to know what you thought about this case. Um, if you have any suggestions for future cases, please drop them in the comments down below. I would love to know what sort of cases do you guys want to hear about. Do you use, are you liking the solved murder sort of cases or would you like some more unsolved cases? What do you guys want to see next basically please remember to take care of yourselves and each other and i'll see you in the next video bye